Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. Can you hear me? Just turn this down. Oh, that's better. Um, apologies for absence. We've received apologies from Councillor Leo Fletcher, Councillor Cathy Douse, and Councillor Matthew Hartley. Um, is there any other? No. Um, I've received apologies for leaving earlier for Councillor Littlewood. Um, no urgent business to report. Um, any declarations of interest? I do indeed. I'm a deputy for GLL, so I'll step out at that point. Okay, thanks. Um, the minutes, are, are you um, okay to confirm the minutes of the last meeting? No? Yes, yeah. Chair. Uh, I just want to ask if we are corrupt yes. in terms of the number. Yeah, four, three members. Okay. Um, and if, obviously, for the last item, if we make any recommendations or say anything, we can do that in the next meeting, verify it. Okay, thanks. Um, um, if it's okay with the panel, we're going to turn around the um, order of the agenda. So we'll be taking parks and estates and open spaces first, if that's okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah? Lovely. That's item six. If you'd like to give us just a brief synopsis, I mean, don't go through and tell us loads. We take it as red, but it's nice if you just do a, a run through for us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Good evening, everybody. My name's Kate Wilson. I'm the Assistant Director of Environment and Leisure, uh, and obviously joined by Councillor Correa and also um, um, Dawn Squires as well, who's um, Head of Parks, Estates and Open Spaces. Um, hopefully you've had an opportunity to read through the report, but um, I also um, am very glad to um, say that Sue Reeve is also with us this evening, who's uh, representing Friends of Oxley's Woodlands. Obviously, our Friends of uh, Groups are, are very important to the work that we do. Absolutely. So just to give you a really quick overview of, of, of what the service has achieved and some of the challenges over uh, the past year. Um, so uh, the provi provision of parks and open spaces is a non-statutory service, um, but the assets are highly valued by the community um, and contribute significantly to improving lives and never more so seen, I think, than, than through the, the COVID-19 pandemic. But we hope that that continues and people that maybe traditionally didn't use parks and open spaces will continue to do so. Uh, we've had considerable capital investment, over a million pounds investment in 11 park sites, which has been successfully delivered. Um, in terms of Parks for London um, and the Good Parks for London category, uh, the Royal Borough of Greenwich significantly improved um, its ranking against other London authorities, moving from 24th to 10th place. And the report includes a case study on Greenwich for health, fitness and, and wellbeing criteria as well. You'll, you'll be aware that we have 13 Green Flag Awards um, in 23-24, including an award at Eltham Crematorium. And in London in Bloom, we were successful achieving a Silver Gilt Award in the borough category, Silver Gilt for Wellhall Pleasance and Silver Gilt for Eltham Crematorium as well. In terms of the, the, the background work that keep, make sure that the things that we do uh, sort of um, achieve a high standard and are safe for our, not only for our workforce, but also for our, our residents and communities, we achieved quality assurance ISO 9001 for the, uh, for the tree services and also health and safety ISO 45001 um, for our, also for our tree services as well. Uh, we achieved gold award for the charter for the bereaved and also in terms of uh, flop, fleet operators recognition scheme uh, we were also successful in achieving accreditation and, and passing there as well. So hopefully that will give um, members the, the confidence that the way that we go about our business is robust and, and, and designed to, to be in line with, with best practice. 
So as well, just before um, obviously I, I pass back to you, Chair, I think it's also important to recognise the, um, the, the work that the team do around biodiversity and sustainability as well. So the corporate target in May 2018 to plant 2,022 trees was achieved ahead of schedule in December 2020. And the new target in May 2022 to plant 5,000 trees by March 2026 is well underway, with well over half of that target already achieved and, and most of it already planned um, into this year. We're also trialling um, not to use glyphosate-based weed killers in our parks, um, except to deal with the, the invasive species such as giant hogweed and Japanese hogweed, which we're obliged to deal with robustly because of their invasive nature. And we plan to extend that, tri uh, that trial throughout 2024. And as well, in terms of our contribution to carbon reduction objectives, we're also uh, advanced in using um, electric equipment, uh, such as grounds maintenance equipment and arboricultural machinery, rather than two-stroke fuel machinery. So all in all, we're contributing to a number of the, the corporate priorities, and um, that gives you just a very quick flavour and overview of what those might be. But obviously, um, Dawn and I are very happy to, to take any questions you may have. Thank you very much. It's a very substantial report, so thank you for that. Um, do you have any questions? Yes. I'd like to talk a bit more about um, the, the carbon and climate side of parks. So you quite rightly um, highlighted in the report how important parks and trees are to, to carbon reduction. Um, I'd like to know a bit more about kind of how you choose you know, what trees to plant, where to plant them, sort of how many, I know there's a target, but sort of how many in each location. Because there, there can be a trade-off, in fact, between carbon and biodiversity. So you mentioned Japanese hogweed, right? That's actually really good for capturing carbon, but terrible for a lot of other reasons. And you wouldn't want to plant it everywhere. So it'd be great to learn a bit more about your, your thinking on tree planting. Yeah. Th thank you, Councillor, for the question. So that we, we always aim to use native species when, with the tree planting schemes, and we actually uh, are assessing ground conditions uh, and, and the topography, excuse me, if I pronounce that correctly, <laughs> of, of, of the area when actually deciding on locations for, 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 for tree planting. We are actually uh, um, purchasing a, a software package as well to assist us with um, our canopy assessment of tree planting across the borough. And so that will identify where there's areas where we could actually have further planting or, or uh, whether it's large areas or pockets of areas. So that's sort of work in progress to help us with this, this uh, quite uh, exciting piece of work that we're, we're playing a part in. Just, uh, just to add as well, uh, Chair, if you don't mind, I think uh, Dawn just touched up about on regarding the tree canopy system that we go, we're purchasing is something that we, we as a council are going to invest in the reason why we, it will tell us across the borough where it's needed and what's needed and also tell us it will, it will give us all data that we can use going forward to regarding helping our carbon neutral plan and make sure that we're data led going forward. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Kate, and uh, your team for the report. I just want to go on staffing level, which is on page 57, 4.5. Can you see that? Is that okay? Is that? Yeah, 4.5? Yeah, I just want to touch on because according to your statement here, you haven't got the data. And um, I just want to know how you plan for sicknesses and what is the cost to your department and how is that impacting the, your service? Did you, did you see that page on page 57? Am I right? We're 57 on the paper. I don't know what pages that are on. Is it by, is it by um, table six? 
when agencies start? Yeah, yeah. That is uh, page 56 at the table and then 57 on the paper. Is that right that you haven't got the data? You are relying on, sorry, you are relying on the HR to give you the information. But I just wondered how do you plan for sicknesses, absence, how much it costs you, and how is that impacting our residents? Right, thank you, yes. thank you, thank you, Councillor. Uh, yeah, I, th I think I understand the question. So yes, you're, you're right that we actually get our sickness stats from our HR colleagues. Uh, yeah, but actually our service does actually monitor staff absence and is aware with teams if there is any uh, um, long-term sickness and how arrangements need to be put in place to cover that in order that it doesn't affect performance and service standards. So that it can create challenges, yes, and it actually can create additional work for those which are, are, are at work, yes. Um, and so that it's important that we actually manage our sickness well, and we actually follow the council's procedure for managing sickness um, to ensure that um, staff actually return back to work as soon as possible, as soon as they're fit and able. Does, does that help answer what you... Uh. Yeah, it does. And Chair, if I can have a supplementary question. Yes, sir. So according to your table here, it costs you or your department, or you personally, I hope not, Three hundred and eighty-seven thousand pounds, yeah, and the percentage is nine point seven five percent. That's the staggering figure. If we are looking how we can manage um, our expenses as a council, so that we can able to spend the money somewhere else. And I just think that 9.75%, and you might not be able to answer this, it might be due to HR to answer you, but I think it's something you need to know and find out why we are spending that amount of money on absence. Sorry, if I'm putting you awkwardly, you, you can reply me by email. So, I'm not fussy. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Uh, it, it's, um, it's a good point, and it's something that we take very seriously because we do. We want as many of our, our workforce to be in work. But obviously, human beings do get unwell. But how we then support people to come back to the workforce at the early oppor earliest opportunity is really important. Obviously, parks, estates, open space is very much a frontline Yep. manual workforce so that inevitably there will be some some challenges around that um, but notwithstanding that we do work very closely with with corporate hr colleagues just to make sure that the way that we're managing um sickness absence is is certainly via policy which we which we always do but whether there's anything that we can do additionally to that that will try and reduce that level of, of sickness absence but it is something we're aware of and something that we're working towards I've got a couple, or you may think some of them are silly, but I shall ask them. But what does um, <clears throat> P-E-O-S stand for? It's, it's parks, estates, and open spaces. Oh, right, and estates. And that's just covering the areas yeah. of, 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 of um, uh, responsibility <laughs> that we do our maintenance. Thank you. I knew it would be something simple. I know that. Um, uh, with the maintain, maintenance of Marion Wilson Park, um, if the animals are unwell or need to, to see a vet, have you got a specific vet that you take them to or that, that is aligned with the park? Um, yes, we do have a good working relationship with a, a local vet, so they are on call if there is any issues with, with the animal stock. Um, we also have a very experienced stock person 
who actually cares and maintains for, for all the animal stock as well. So that he is very much aware in tune if, if any of the animals are failing in health and need attention. Uh, um, now I'm looking at um, table two, 4.7. And it says here about skate parks, there's two highlighted. Um, I know one is in um, Horn Park. Where is the other one? It's at Charlton Park, yes. Thank you. So I know the one in um, Horn Park, it's, um, well, I don't think many people use it because I don't think it's, you know, how it should be. But um, that's another time. That's but to add to that, the team is looking into how we can work with uh, other departments as well to see how, what we can do to help that. We're having close conversation with the ward councillor, your colleague, about that, and we've been we're on on the case definitely. Thank you. So there's just a couple more questions. Oxley's Woods is that um, that's one of our ones that you look after, is it? Yeah. Yes, Councillor, yes. Uh, uh, there's the Oxley's Woods, um, it is a, a part of it is an ancient woodland, it's a site of, um, of, of, of interest. Uh, and we do have a member of the, I still hear from a member of the Friends Group, uh, um, who has, um, uh, plays an active part in helping to manage the site and has working parties as well. Um, we've recently done some um, uh, paving uh, pathway works, haven't we, Sue, to, uh, to improve the pathways. And it's like, so it is an area of our responsibility. Yeah. That's, that's good. As I know, I experienced being locked in the park, actually, <laughs> when I went on the bat, bat discovering evening. Yeah, I, I can confirm, Councillor, that we are the chair, that we are actually revising all our signage. Yeah, it was and, a terrible and, sign. I know, yes, <laughs> I apologise about that. And we're, we're looking at having probably QR codes so that people can readily find out where to get help and, and actually what the closing times are. No, the, that, that, the that's very good. Yeah. But I did get to see and hear some bats, so that was good as well. Um, there's a horse field that um, is in Middle Park and it belongs to the Crown, I believe, and it's been talked about um, being turned into allotments. I mean, we don't own that, so I don't know what what's happening. Do you know where I mean? It's by quite by um, Vista Road, and they keep the horses on there, one part of it. Yeah, yes, I'm, I've, I've not had any direct involvement, but I'm familiar with the, the location you're talking about, and the, the, it's, what, it's not us, the council, which will be having any discussions about it converting to a, 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 a allotment site. It's not mm. our, our land. No, because they're talking about putting 500 uh, plots on there, so... Uh, We'll wait and see. So, but, but thank you. That's um, all of my questions. Did you have any questions, Maisie? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair, and apologies for lateness. So, bus, bus troubles. Um, uh, I don't know if you've already done this, but could I ask about the controllable budgets um, graph? If you, if you've the um, it's under current financial um, position. Just. Um, that I, could you make, um, maybe sort of talk, so if you take sort of tree maintenance, could you talk through what each column is um, saying? That, so the, if the, re, the revised budget is 37,000, would that be right? Just so I understand the, um, the graph, the um, table. Yes, yes, uh, councillor. I can confirm with the tree maintenance team. They actually under, under uh, take all the maintenance of the tree stock in parks, um, highways, and estates, and so that the arboricultural team actually undertake the work for, for, for all, all the tree stock. And that I think they have had um, um, budget pressures. There's been the OPM the Oak Procession Remoth issues, which has actually had an impact on, on our budgets and managing that. And then you do get actually seasonal um, windfall of trees, and which actually creates additional working hours and so forth. Um, and, and so that um, they, um, 
uh, it, it is uh, it, it does ebb and flow throughout the, 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 the year but that, that they actually do actually have a, a good management of, of their, their budgets and that's for the parks trees, the highways trees and, and the estates trees. Okay. Does, about, does that, has that explained it y enough? Yes, yeah. well, I was just saying, if, if you're looking at the whole, that whole um, budget table that you've got there, so, um, in the revised budgets, the ones you've got in red, which are sort of a bit bracketed, um, what's just, what's the, why yeah, why is it red? Yeah. So, what should I answer for you? Yeah, I think if um, what we'd like to be able to do is, is come back to you, if that's okay. okay we yeah, haven't yeah. got the specifics yeah. of that um, right now, but if, if that's okay, Chair, we can we can provide that information tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I still have a, sec a follow-up follow question um, about sort of, uh, particularly about sort of tree maintenance. Um, is how much of do, uh, do we know how much of our lots you say lots of what our tree services are done in house? Are we outsourcing to some? Private companies, and so what percent do we know what percentage of that? <coughs> all our trees are done in house. All, of, all our trees are done in house. It, it, it depends. Uh, we, we had an issue with uh, in, in Pomsa Common down in Aponda. We had to bring a specialist in to bring special tr uh, cranes to take a, a tree out of a bond, but all our trees are done internally, everything okay. within our team. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chair, giving me the second chance. Um, ah. This question might not relate to, uh, well, it's related, but it might not be directly involved. I just want to find out your relationship with the planning department, because when it comes to, you know, displacing, animals, birds, and whatever in an environment, do you have an impact on that? And uh, what sort of advice do you give to the planning board? I, I'm saying this because um, in my garden, I had uh, a tree that boss goes there, but um, when I asked somebody to come and clear the garden, I did not give clear instruction. And what happened is everything disappeared. And I was so sad to get the boss. They, they haven't got any place to live. So I'm just thinking, uh, do you have any relationship with the planning department so that if we have to protect a species or a board or a rod, do you have any impact or any intake on that? Thanks, Chair. Yeah. Um, uh, Councillor, I can confirm that they actually have the, uh, their own um, tree experts and experts for dealing with any pl planning issues, but we don't directly get involved with that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very. Um, very, very good report, so thank you. Carry on the good work. If you wanted to leave now, Sam. Thank you. No, it's just a note. So it's item five now.
Good evening. If you'd like to just summarise, again, take it as bread, but if you could just summarise for us. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give a very brief introduction before I hand over to, to Tim and uh, Greenwich Leisure Limited uh, colleagues. Um, but um, before I do hand across, um, I just thought giving a very brief overview of the item would be useful. So as members will probably be aware, the council has a number of sport, leisure and library assets in the form of 12 libraries, seven leisure centres and five adventure play centres provided across the borough. And those... Um, those buildings deliver a broad range of activities and services uh, to our, our residents and communities. And these are much valued by, by the residents of, of the borough. And along with an outreach sports development programme, these facilities and services are wrapped up into a contract with an annual cost to the council of over six million pounds. And this is being uh, managed by Greenwich Leisure Limited with the current contract in place until 2031. So if I can hand over to Tim now. Thank you, Kate. Yeah, I can just introduce myself. My name is Tim Heatherings, and I'm Head of Service for Sport, Leisure and Libraries for RBG. I introduce uh, Richard Gallagher, who is the leisure side of the GLL partnership, Paul Drum, who is the library side, um, and Augustus, the far side, is also linked into the outreach sport development service that we offer across the Costa So I'll pass you over to Richard now, and uh, he'll run through the report. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, as Tim said, I'll, I'll present the highlights from the Leisure and Adventure Play services um, over the, the last 18 months or so, uh, before handing over to my colleagues Augustus and, and then finally Paul. Uh, so, 2022-23 saw the first period of uninterrupted operation for the service since 2019. The leisure centres have gone from strength to strength during that time, with several improvements made. At Sutcliffe Park, the little-used skate park has been converted into a gymnastic hall. Usage of the space has since increased dramatically from around 40 uses per week to almost 1,200 weekly visits from children and young people. There were also further improvements made at the waterfront to ensure that the centre continues to provide a great service for residents until the new Woolwich Leisure Centre opens. These included refurbishments to the roof, the fitness areas and updated external branding. Thamesmere also saw roof refurbishments uh, and upgraded external branding, along with a new fire alarm system and a new studio floor. At Eltham, the reception area was refurbished, with the council customer services team relocating to the front of the library. Improvements made there in the previous year continue to be appreciated by customers, particularly the upgraded hydrotherapy spa suite, which is well used by the public, and also offers popular women-only and men-only sessions, disability swimming lessons, and target swimming lessons in partnership with the Black Swimming Association. We've also just commenced refurbishment works at the Greenwich Centre to upgrade the fitness facilities there, uh, which will enable a much wider programme to be offered, including more sessions for families and for, uh, more sensory activities. We've continued to work with the Council on a number of initiatives, including the Holiday Food and Fun programme, in which we've provided hundreds of free holiday club spaces to eligible children who receive enrichment activities, daily hot meals and shopping vouchers for their parents. The Holiday Meals Programme, with thousands of meals distributed from leisure centres, libraries and adventure playgrounds. And the Woolwich Nighttime Enterprise Zone, with a number of sport and fitness themed Woolwich Lates events throughout the year. Together with the Council, we've also delivered a number of offers for residents, including the Give It To Go membership scheme, with nearly 500 eligible residents receiving funded memberships. 5,500 adults have also enjoyed a one-pound afternoon swim, which is available every weekday at all council pools. And 3,200 families have also enjoyed a five-pound family swim over the last year. These sessions are available weekly at all of the pools. We've also remained focused on providing employment opportunities for local people. We're an accredited real living wage employer and have run several fully funded lifeguard and swimming teacher courses over the past year. Overall, leisure usage is up um, to, sorry, overall leisure usage up to September of this year is 16% higher than the same period last year with 1.3 million visits already and a forecast that this year will be the highest usage of the past five years. The adventure playgrounds also remain highly popular with over 60,000 visits during the past year. 2023 also marks GLL's 30th anniversary which we've celebrated with a number of staff, customer and community events. And it's also the 15th anniversary of the GLL Sports Foundation, which has funded over 700 Greenwich-based athletes during those 15 years. That concludes my update. I'll now hand over to my colleague, Augustus, to cover sport development. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, guys and girls, ladies, gentlemen. Um, so I'm the sports development manager for GLL, and um, the sports development provision, the, our, our main aim is to provide sport and physical activity opportunities at the point of need within the community. Where possible, residents are um, offered the facilities or the activities close to where they live. So whether that be a, um, a sheltered accommodation, uh, a supported accommodation, a temple, a church hall, a community center, within our libraries, um, wherever there is space to do physical activity, we will try to facilitate. And we do that through consultation. So we try not to prescribe to people what they should do, but rather, encourage them, motivate them, and have conversations to actually find out what they want to do. So it's insight-based. Our focus groups, um, which tend to be uh, disabled, uh, BAME, women and girls, um, older adults, um, and disability, remain the same as they did last year. Um, we also have target areas that we work in, i.e., Thamesmead, Abbey Wood, uh, Abbey Wood, Woolwich, uh, Sutcliffe Park and Middle Park, Glindon and Plumstead. Now, that's not to say that we don't deliver across the borough, but those are our target areas because those are identified within the 2019 to 24 uh, physical activity strategy. Um, this year, we've exceeded our KPIs so far. We had a KPI of uh, 16,500 visits to our community sessions. We've currently exceeded that by 3%, um, which is quite good in, in terms of the target groups that we're working with. We're delivering sessions each year. So our target is to deliver 50 sessions per week. Our overall target is obviously 50 times um, 12. Again, we've exceeded that currently, so 600 was a target. We've hit 609 already, um, which we're very pleased with also. One of the major milestones that we've had is to uh, deal with our work with older adults, and we've managed to forge partnerships with Peabody Housing Trust, um, so, um, Southern Housing, as well as within the local authorities, sheltered and, uh, sheltered and supported accommodation. So we're now sending our physical activity instructors into those units so that the <coughs> residents are assured within their environment and not having to come out at all, which was one of the things which was identified through our consultation. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we also deliver London Youth Games. Um, for the sort of 11 to 18 year olds. Um, this year, we managed to finish eighth within the borough. So each 33 boroughs compete, and Greenwich finished eighth overall, which was really remarkable. Um, really happy with that. We've got some gold medals. And lots of our para sports, um, para swimming, para football, um, did exceptionally well, winning golds. Um, but overall, we had over two and a half thousand visits, i.e. And what that means is whether it be a competition, a trial or training, we had two and a half thousand visits of young people to those sessions, which we were very happy with also. Um, for our collaboration work with um, the APCs of the Adventure Playgrounds and the libraries, we're also delivering sessions within them, especially during these summer periods. And this year we had over 100, uh, 1,500 visits to whether it be an APC or a library um, this year. So we had sessions during the week, a couple of hours a week, um, which we're really happy with also. Um, there are other things, our, our, go our goals for this year or the forthcoming year is a sustainability of those sessions and to access funding so that we can actually support new sessions. Thank you very much. It seems like you've come on in leaps and bounds. Very, very good. I'll hand over to uh, Paul. Good evening, Chair. Good evening.
Greenwich and councillors. Uh, I've got some uh, very positive performance news about libraries in the Royal Borough of Greenwich. Uh, so as of October 2023, we are back to 90%, 93 percent of our visits of the pre-pandemic pre -pandemic level. That's 205,000 a month compared to 219,000 pre-pandemic, but that's still well above the national average. Uh, issues again, we are now 33 percent higher uh, than we were in pre-pandemic. That's 153,000 a month compared to uh, 115,000 issues a month. Woolwich Library is back to 100,000 visits a month and over. So in October, we had 117,000 visits. Woolwich is the second busiest library in the country, which is a fantastic record. Uh, we're very proud of our very diverse range of activities and events. We run over 650 free activities a month across all 12 libraries. So for one example being the Greenwich Centre Library, where they have 30 different activities a week. This includes uh, Lego Robotics, uh, English, Italian, Mandarin, and Hungarian Rhyme Times, uh, film clubs, chess clubs, knit and natters, uh, coffee mornings. So again, we have a very broad range. Uh, we issue SIM cards to the low-income families in the borough, which has proved very successful. Uh, we invest in our libraries through decoration, furniture, technology, for example, this year we've even invested £40,000 on New Children's Library in Woolwich Library across the road. We've, uh, we have an OB projector in our Abbey Wood Library. Uh, we're, at the moment we're focusing on again, our community library, so investing in uh, new Eltham, child and new furniture, new decoration and so forth. Uh, libraries also run, up this, run the Startup Greenwich Initiative, which relates to business support for local entrepreneurs and has already taken off in the borough. Uh, to date, Startup Greenwich has delivered 42 events since March 2022. We've had 465 aspiring or entrepreneurs and businessmen attend our Startup Greenwich workshops. We've already, we have over 200 registered Startup Greenwich members. Uh, our Feed and Read program is very popular, uh, funded by the council throughout the holiday period. So during the summertime, we should have over 9,000 li 9, lunches across the summer. Woolwich Library is our busiest issue, issue uh, dispensing 200 lunches uh, a day, and literally they go within minutes. So it's a fantastic program. For the, for the, uh, one of the, one of the fa foundation stones of, of public library is the Summer Reading Challenge. This summer we had 2,085 local children participate with 1,001 finishing, completing. We work very closely with our leisure colleagues. So one of our initiatives working with, uh, with our sports development team, Augustus team, is running a project called Beyond Books, which will be running once a month in Elton for 12 months. It's a combination of uh, library staff teaching robotics, Lego and so forth, uh, and our sports development team have been providing silent disco equipment, so it's a bit of exercise and a bit of fun and learning as well. Uh, again, we're very proud of our very diverse range of activities to meet the needs of our, our rich community. Uh, libraries in the Royal Greenwich create a fantastic set of events across all libraries to celebrate Black History Month in, this October. Just one or two highlights. We had an author event with Louise Hare. Louise Hare, her deb with her debut, no debut novel, This Lovely City, which was published in, two, in 2020 and has been described as a Windrush novel windrush novel which offers a vivid portrait of the immigrant experience in post-war london uh, we also had a uh, black ballet which was a short moving ballet that tells the story of a young soldier in world war ii and follows him and his family through their life in the uk uh, we're well known for our author events and on tuesday evening at eltham we had the internationally recognized author and actor patterson joseph attend to read his book and uh, again again 100 plus people attending Again, that was linked in with uh, the Elton Reed. Uh, libraries strive to keep a constantly evolving service to reflect the needs of our rich, diverse community. So we do it by engaging with our community partners and residents, uh, such as the Hungarian Rhyme Time and Greenwich Centre Library was recommended by one of our, with our, of, of the community there. We're currently having our annual user survey, user survey, and also when it comes to book selection, we get requests from the member of the public and we purchase that. So again, uh, we're very proud of our service. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you very much indeed for that. Very, uh, very interesting. Hopefully, people got a, a good understanding. There was a lot of figures flied about there, which, uh, but they're in the report. You'll see the, the, what they mean. All right, and back to you, Chair. Now. Thank you. Thank you very much. It seems you, you're thriving, so that's that's very good to to hear. Um, do you have a question? Yes, Olu. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you all of you for your presentation. And Chair, if I will admit, this is a, a set of scrutiny that I've seen that a lot of people were there, and you can see that there's delegation of power, authority, measuring everything so that each people can answer the specific uh, question. So I commend you for that. Thank you for that. And Chair, if I will declare my interest, I'm from uh, Thames Mid Morning. So some of the questions I will ask might be particularly about Thames Mead. But uh, from my experience, even with Woolwich and Thames Mead, the library, I am so happy with the service you are giving. You haven't said anything to the contrary to what I've experienced, because I use the library a lot. Not only that we have my surgery there, but I use it occasionally to do, you know, private uh, 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 job. And uh, the service at um, Thames Mead is exceptional, and I'm very, very happy to say that, even to recommend that to other people. I haven't said that, though. Um, I have, I have a, a feedback from residents. So you know there is a leisure center there, and in the past, people drop their children to go and swim and whatever, and they would be hanging around. But now, because the library is closed from 7 o'clock, and I want you to investigate that, they will be standing along the area, which is sometimes inti intimidating to some other people. So if you can look into that for me, please, uh, that would be very, very appreciative. Then you have said about uh, everything you have done, which I'm not going to dispute that because I've experienced that. However, what are your focuses for improvement? Because we can't be perfect. There should be some areas of improvement. So please let us know. If that is okay, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Was that for, for Thamesmead Library specifically? or? Thamesmead and here. Because those are the two that I use often. Thank you, Councillor, for the questions. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're constantly trying to, to again, through engagement with the community, through our user survey, through our requests from customers, to see what, how we can evolve our events and activities. We believe that investment is, is key. So, again, we've just in, put £40,000 worth of furniture in uh, in Woolwich Children's Library. Uh, we have one of these OB, OB projector units, which I can send you details of. We also have one of those in Thamesmead, again, to help bring in young families. Again, it, we sort of, the borough is constantly changing, so we have to be aware of that through engagement. And again, our staff in both libraries and across service very much reflect the borough, so we're very fortunate in that. So yes, yeah, so again, it's looking at book stock, looking at new technology investment, looking at making sure that our activities reflect the ever-changing community profile. So, so yeah, so again, and luckily I think because we were running so many activities, we really have noticed that is bringing people back. A lot of the other library authorities across the country are on 75, 80% uh, pre-pandemic levels. Uh, but we're on 93 uh, every month, so again, that's really changing it. Our issue's up 33%, so we know we're doing the right thing about are we getting the right stock. We've spent a lot of money on online resources. We're really promoting that. We're using social media to really communicate our activities to right across the board, so we're getting a lot savvy up more marketing. 
Could I ask what an OB projector does? Uh, an OB projector is, it, it's a, sorry, it's a projector which is uh, in the scene and it projects down on, onto a mat and it's lots of little interactive, lots of interactive games. So you can, there's sports ones like you can play football. It's good for little kids. But also there's fun ones like there's mice coming out of cheese and you have to sort of jump up and down. So it can be used for a, a multitude of different functions, so fun for kids, but also for exercise. So we've got, yeah. I can send you pictures and details, which is probably the best. Uh, Do you want to say something? Okay. Um, sorry, Chair. I've got two other questions. Well, not questions, but it's just uh, for that details. So you said about uh, holiday foods. If I can have more, if we can have more information on that, how that has been done, where about it's been done. And then you mentioned something about uh, living wage for your employee. So uh, I, uh, a specific question on that is that, are we sure that your department is living uh, and, you know, giving living wage, or is it London wage or whatever to your employer or employees, rather? <coughs> So those are two questions, but the first, the second one is specific. Is it yes or no? We don't. We do. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Councillor. I, I, I didn't quite catch the, the first question. Was it about the holiday yes. meals? Okay. So I'll I'll pass over to uh, to Paul or Tim uh, for 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 that one. Uh, but if, I suppose if I cover the living wage question, so so GLL is a um, a, a real living wage foundation accredited member. Um, to, I think I'm right in saying we're one of only two percent of, of employers a, across the UK that that have that accreditation. And so I, yeah, I can say categorically, GLL pays all, all of its staff at least the, the the living wage relevant to to that area. So whether that's London living wage or, or the national living wage. Yeah, in relation to the holiday food, that's, um, we're basically, libraries and leisure centres and the adventure playgrounds are, are basically distribution sites. They're all distributed through public health, so public health supply all the, all the sandwiches and the resources for that, and we're just a distribution point. Macy? Um, thank you very much, and thank you for the report. It's incredibly detailed, and as um, I'm uh, in, an East Greenwich councillor, so the Greenwich Centre is in my ward, and I use it all the time. I have to say, it's a, I think it's a brilliant service. Um, I, I do go to yoga there. I went to the gym there this morning, saw the refurbished works, do my surgeries there, use your printers. I use it all the time. Um, the first one is just sort of a, a suggestion of just something that I think works well there. Is that there's the open? We have the open spaces in the reception. Where there's lots of sort of tables and chairs, and it's just like incredibly well used. Um, and during like sort of the cost of living and the energy crisis, we've just been seen really like lots of people using it to work, and also lots of um, groups of teenagers use it, but in a really kind of like safe way. Um, so I just think that's I don't know if that's something that is happening in other legislators or could be rolled out more, but it's just um, it's kind of really fantastic to see the way that space is being used in that centre. Um, so that's more of a suggestion. But the the, the main my main question is. Um, that's a bit uh, particular, but it's about your kind of relationship as, um, obviously, when you're building leisure centres in new in part, as parts of these like newer developments, um, and your relationship as sort of like a subtenants with leaseholders and freeholders. So uh, my understanding with the space in the Greenwich, my Greenwich Centre experience is my understanding is you are the subtenant in that relationship. The, the council is the leaseholder. You're employed to do the service on behalf of the council, and the freeholder is that management, the managing company. Um, but my understanding is that you also have to pay, you are also having to pay service charges to the management company. Um, I don't know if that's correct, so if you'd A confirm, a confirm if that's correct. B, is, is that just what kind of impact that has on you, your organisation in like a positive, is it a positive way or negative or, or neutral? And are other leisure centres in those similar relationships or is, does it, does that, how, how does that inform sort of future leisure centres, for example, at Woolwich? Um, I'd just be interested to know more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, so Grand Centre is a unique setup down there. Um, 
basically is operated through the, 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 the council pay all the services charged to, to MACE and then it's cross-charged back to GLL. And that's the way the mechanism worked. Um, similar, there's another setup at the Elsham Centre. So everyone has their own. They're the two sort of the unique ones. Um, but anything going forward, it will be a single lease. The idea behind all of this is a single lease by us to GLL. That's the way we want to plan it with the various terms and conditions associated with each site. Um, yep. I was just going to uh, come back on your first point and uh, agree with you absolutely. It's it's great to see how well that, that area is, is used. Um, uh, and we do have similar uh, offers at, at other centres. So Plumstead Centre would, would be a good example. We've got the, the Book Mountain there. And so at all of our centres, we, we provide free Wi-Fi. And, and so it's um, essentially a, a study zone for, um, for, for children and young people, um, people of all ages, to, to be honest. But it, it does sort of largely depend on, on the available space. So some of the smaller centres can't necessarily offer that. But th those with libraries, I'm sure Paul would concur, offer sort of similar um, facilities as well. Thank you. Um, I've just got a couple of questions. Um, in 4.2, um, you said in 2012, a new 15-year contract between GLL, GLL and RBG was agreed. It resulted in the seamless integration of 12 libraries and five adventure play centres, outreach sport development service, and seven current leisure centres. Is this as it stands now? Is that, that the amount that you had? I, I seem to remember that we, we we lost the library. I can't. Is that not true? No. No. Uh, East uh, East Greenwich Library closed, and the Greenwich Centre replaced it. So it was yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in four point eight, um, you're saying about the little used indoor skate park. Um, was closed and you, you've turned it into something else, which is brilliant because you're getting more use out of it. But where do you think that those 40 or so people that used that go now? Thank you, Councillor. I, I don't, um, I couldn't tell you exactly how many um, unique individuals were, were using it. it. It was sort of uh, up to 40 visits per week, but the, there was, you know, multiple people. So it, it was sort of fewer than, than 40 unique users. Um, uh, we we ha couldn't I couldn't say to you exactly where they've gone, but there are several um, skate parks in in the local area. And as part of the um, dismantlement works at Sutcliffe Park, we we also donated the vast majority of the the wood and, and all of the equipment to um, to local skate parks, including some some indoor skate parks, um, just to to make sure that that nothing went to to waste. Well, that, that's very good. Good, very good to hear. And um, 4.1.3, um, you're saying about uh, your adventure playgrounds and all the facilities that you have. Um, how do you, um, I know you've said that some of them you, you, you tweet, I believe, and do social media. Is that how you get it out to, to everyone? Because it's not everybody that uses social media. That was for, for the Adventure Playgrounds, that, that question, Councillor, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, uh, we, we find that the service users at the Adventure Playgrounds, it, it is largely word of mouth. They're, they're at the heart of their local communities. Um, and, and some of the service users do have access to social media, some, some don't. Um, so, it, to be honest, it's quite old school. We, we go out into the communities um, and kind of, you know, drum up attendance at the local um, schools and, and so on and, and sort of forge those community relationships to, to bring people in rather than relying on, I suppose, more, more advanced forms of, of marketing. Thank you. Uh, and good about the leisure centres with adventure playgrounds. Who, do, who actually funds those? Is it the council or is it part, part of each of you? Yeah, yes, Chair, the, um, it's part of the, le the leisure management contract is linked into the adventure playgrounds. In um, 4.1.6, it says that um, the additional discounts on leisure facilities, and you've got three new offers that, offers that were launched 
last autumn designed to assist with the cost of living crisis. What were those three initiatives, please? So they, they were, um, the, um, they're, they're set out below on, on the bullet points. So the um, Swim for a Quid offer, um, so that's, that's every weekday afternoon, um, so that's 5,500 adults for, for that. Um, and then we do the Family Swim for a Fiver session. So every week at every pool, there's, there's some time where family of up to six can pay just a fiver and, and, and come swim in. Uh, and then finally, the, um, to, both of those are open to everyone. The, the third one is the Give It To Go offer, which is, is more targeted. Um, and so eligible um, residents uh, get a, um, a funded membership um, and uh, get full, full access to, to the leisure centres. Um, and, and we've had so nearly 500 people uh, and over 6,300 visits on, on that scheme as well. Thank you. Would it not work out cheaper for a family if they're only a family of three or four rather than do five a, for a family swim? Or do, does it not work like that? So it's, um, it's five pounds in total for, for up to six people. So, um, I, I mean, I couldn't tell you the price off the top of my head, but if a, a junior swim is sort of £2.50 and an adult swim is, is five pounds, um, but you're getting sort of up to six people for, for a fiver in, in total. So it, it's fantastic value, to be honest. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed. Does anybody have any more questions? Yes. Oh, go on. Finally, Chair, if you will permit me, so we've seen what you've done this year. So my question is, especially to the library, what are your challenges for 2024? And is there any proactive things you're doing to, you know, to solve that? I think we've, uh, I mean, our figures on a national level are exceptionally good. I suppose it's for us it's about strive to sort of not get too comfortable and pat ourselves on the back. Again, uh, our community is constantly evolving, changing, whether it's Ukrainian refugees coming in or so forth. So again, we want to ensure that our service going forward is always reflective of the community. And again, through, again it's about communication, it's engaging, it's marketing. It's about looking where there's new forms of technology. So. Uh, in recent years, we've really pushed the tech side, so we've been lending out virtual reality goggles to community groups. We've got a bid in with the Arts Council, which we should find out in Freby, to actually, for actually funding a, a virtual reality suite. So you'll have a... <laughs> no, 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 next time. But yes, so again, so we're looking at... Uh, in, we're sort of, when it comes to football through the door, we're sort of, we really are starting to burst out the scenes. We're getting back to pre-pandemic. Our issues are really good. So again, it's about what things can we do, new projects, working with new partners, working with the council. So again, we've been working with, with local, local banks to do uh, uh, business advice, you know, uh, advice on, on poverty and so forth. So again, it's just constantly evolving and trying to diversify our service to meet the needs and stay fresh. Exactly, yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, did you want to go? Sorry, Chair. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, well, uh, when it comes to Thamesmead Library, if you go down there now, you will see most of the meetings that is happening in the town hall here, from housing, panel, planning. But when you get to Thamesmead morning, that library, sometimes we don't have none, sometimes we have one. I just want to find out why do we have that service here and we don't have the same service there. And finally, I don't want you to answer me now if you can't, but please email me uh, about two specific questions regarding Thames Smith. The one with the library when the children are gone swimming and the parents are hanging around, and this one, if you can answer me now. Thank you, Chair. I'm finished. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, just sorry, thank you very much. Just tends to me it's a small library, it's a small space. Um, the legislature is, you know, obviously there's a lot of people around there, and obviously, from our perspective, the time at opening times 
a, a library is going to be in, you know, infinitive on that. They need to be, they need to be chosen when the usage is on. So from my perspective, well, obviously we'll look into that. We'll look into options that maybe we, we, maybe we open, uh, open later and close later. We'll see, but there's options on the table. So nothing's in and nothing's out really. We do what we can for the service. Sorry, for my final question was um, just with the leisure centres and the fuel. In the report, you talk about the fuel bills and the rise, and you've had a, a, a million pound rise in your fuel bills for heating the swimming pools and that sort of thing. Um, and you said you were working on a sort of solution. Um, could you tell us a bit more about um, what, what sort of solution you're looking for, or and what, how how much capacity the service has to to meet those kind of rising fuel bills? Presuming they're going to carry on for a while. Yeah, from, from, from an RBG perspective, obviously we're discussing various things with Jill L at the moment, that's various discussions going on, but it's, it's a bigger picture as well around all, all the sites as well, not just leisure centres, also the libraries as well. So it, it, it's in discussion. Thank you very much. Um, are, we, are you happy to note the report? Yeah, Noted. Happy. Thank you very much, extremely pleased with that. Thank you. And next item is item seven. It's to um, to look at the things for the next meeting. So, are you? Have you found it? It's right at the back. Have you got it? Yeah. There's, it's a very short agenda for next um, meeting, so was there anything specific you wanted to ask or we could give to officers before they do that report? If you can't think of anything now, yeah. um, email me, but do email myself yeah. and well, Samantha. Do we, do we have the police coming this time around? No, no, no. You never get. You never gave my. Get gave us the questions. No, um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 